No worries. Hello, everyone. And yeah, I'd like to show you a recent uh, project we worked on under Salsa. Um, so we had a project where the client wanted a text to speech feature implemented on the site. Um, so we opted for Amazon Poly. So let me share my presentation and talk to you about Amazon Poly and how we made, like how we integrated with the Drupal site. Um, so let me start the presentation first. Uh, is the text clear? Yep. So my session title is using Amazon Poly to convert text to speech in Drupal. Um, so the agenda is to initially just, yeah, we'll keep it short and sweet. So we'll just talk a bit of like an overview of Amazon Poly and then the solution architecture. Um, and yeah, I'll demo to you how it looks in, in, in the real side and then happy to take any questions. So what is Amazon Poly? So it's a service offered by Amazon um, under the package of AWS um, services. It converts text to speech using deep learning. Um, and it's really, it, it was my first interaction with it. And it's, it's really quite good in terms of the features as well as ease of use. And also the, yeah, it, it really provides a nice way of converting text to speech. So the main features are that it supports multiple languages and accents. It doesn't, it's a limited list. It's not every language um, or accent, but it's really extensive. It covers, I think, the major live languages, like world live languages. So it's, it's good enough. Um, and they offer two options. One is they, they call it neural mode, and that's more lifelike speech. So it, it sounds as natural as possible. And then there's a standard mode, which is more robotic, if you could say. Um, and and both, yeah, we'll come to pricing, but those, those two modes have two different pricing. The neural one is a bit more expensive. Um, and then the good thing about Amazon Poly, it integrates well with other AWS services. So you can integrate it with Amazon S3, with um, Lambada, if you want, if you wanna create a backend, like serverless backend um, using Lambada. And also it offers a lot of customization options. For example, you can, add some, let's say the way you pronounce certain words, you can customize it. You can add pauses to certain places. You can emphasize on certain sentences. So it provides a huge um, list of customization options. Um, and you can, yeah, you can choose, for example, if you want male voice, female voice, and as I mentioned, the accent, not only the language, but also the accent. So for example, English, you have the American um, English, the, um, the British and then the Australian English, for example. And it's quite cost effective because they charge per character. So um, a million character, which is like, it's quite huge. It's like a narrating a 23 hours movie, you could say. It's about $16 if you go for the neural mode and it's about $4 if you go for the standard mode. So it's really cost effective. And the good thing is they don't charge you for the playback. So once you convert the text to speech, it, it sources as an MP3 file. And that MP3 file, you can either store it in your, um, on your, like if you have your own data center, for example, or you can store it in S3. Um, so the playback is not charged. They just charge you the amount of characters you convert to uh, speech. So that's really cost effective. If you have a news article, let's say three pages, it costs about 16 cent American dollars um, and maybe three cent if it's really uh, the standard mode. So it's really, it's quite cost-effective. Um, and that's one of the reasons the client went for this solution. So just to give you a solution, like an overview about the solution architecture. So what we have is here, the Drupal site, and we created a custom module that, you know, basically when you save the node, it will take the content and then create a queue item. And using cron, we'll process the queue item. And when we, uh, when we post the item, we are basically sending the content to Amazon Poly. And Amazon Poly then converts it to the speech and, and stores the file as MP3. You have some options. You can sort as MP3 or different audio formats. Um, and then Amazon Poly stores the file in S3. In our, in our case, we use that approach, but in other cases, you can store it on your local if you want. But in our case, we thought it's easier if you just start in S3. Um, and what happens is once the file is converted, Amazon Poly returns the file URL to us. And then 
we store that file URL within the node. We have a field in the node and the file will be attached to the node that way. So when you load the node on the front end, we check if that field has a value, basically the file URL, and then we basically play the, um, the audio. So that's how it works. We initially went with this cube approach because we thought um, the processing might be a bit extensive and maybe it will take time. So we didn't want to really have a performance overhead there. But um, later on, we find out actually it wasn't really a big concern because Amazon Poly is quite uh, performant. So it really processes, like we tested several, like or different lengths of articles and usually the file is ready within like a second or less. So it's, it's really performant. We didn't have any issue with the overhead because everything is happening. The processing is happening in, the, in Amazon Poly. So we are not really processing anything in our Drupal site. So the queue option was offered, but eventually right now we went just for the immediate conversion. So once the user said, no, no, we send the content to Amazon Poly, we get it back. And then that's how we, uh, we process it at the moment. But the option is there and I'll show you later on the demo um, how you can configure the options. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so process, as I mentioned now, once you load the node, um, you save the node, and then you get the content fields. Um, you can specify the content field using a custom view mode we created for the node. So you can specify which, because not all fields, you know, like we don't want all fields to be converted to speech. For example, if you have an image field, there's no point. Um, but you can specify which field, let's say the body field or description or any other text-based field. Um, and you can arrange also the ordering of the fields. So for example, if you want the body to be pronounced or narrated before the description, you can do that by arranging the fields in the view mode. Um, also, we strip certain HTML tags from the content because, um, yeah, not every HTML element is worth converting to um, a speech, for example, images or let's say video. So what we do is before we send the content, we make sure that we are just sending mainly text content and not, nothing else. So we do strip some certain HTML tags from the content. And then Amazon Poly supports um, um, a, a kind of markup language called speech synthesis markup language, SSML. Uh, and that allows you basically to control how the voice narrates the content. For example, you can say after each list, list item, add three second pause, for example. So you can say, look at that that point of the text, can you add a pause for three seconds? And then when the text is narrated, there will be a pause. Um, so you can control basically how the text is narrated using the SML uh, markup language. Um, and as I mentioned, we have two options. When we send the data, we can immediately send the data to Amazon Poly when we save the node, or we queue it, and then later on we can process it via corn in the background. Um, and then once we get the S3 object URL, we save it to the field in the node. Um, in the front end, we have a custom block. So that allows you to basically place the audio player anywhere um, on the page. And also we use a, a really good JavaScript library called Media Element JS. Um, it's really full-fledged audio and media player in general. Um, you can use it for playing video files or audio files. And we customize it. We created our own um, audio player using the media element JS to yeah to just fit the the styling or the branding of the site. So now let me just quickly demo to you how it works. So uh, let me know if you are seeing my browser. Yeah, it's actually Google. So let me go back here. So can you see the site now? Yep, it's um test page. Yep, test page. This is a Gov CMS um, test site I set up on my local. Um, and really Amazon Poly, just to show you the, the interface or how to manage the Amazon Poly in the AWS console, you can see it doesn't offer you a lot of options here because it's really, the idea is to really be simple to set up. Um, so you here basically just to test the, the, the feature, but you don't have any additional, you don't have to configure anything. The only thing you need to do is basically create a user, uh, IAM user, add it, to have access to the Amazon Poly service and then use the same user and add it to the S3 bucket, create a custom S3 bucket, add that user there. Um, so Amazon Poly can actually store the file in S3. So that's all you need to configure in Amazon Poly really. There's nothing much. We can, you can add some customizations, the one I mentioned just now, 
So for example, here you can add some lexons, for example, how to pronounce certain words, or you can, if you have, for example, um, acronyms, if you want how to pronounce those acronyms, you can specify them here. Uh, and this just shows you the list of recent, um, yeah, recent uh, tasks that they, uh, conversion tasks basically. So that's it. And this shows you the engine. Um, as I mentioned, there's neural and there's a standard. Um, and then it shows you also the voices um, because you can specify uh, different voices based on the available language. So for example, here for English Australian, you do have the options of um, female and male. Um, and then here you can specify the neural mode or not. So just to give you an example how it works. So this is a neural mode. Um, if you listen to it. Hi there, my name is Olivia. I will read any text you type here. You'll notice it's a bit more natural than if we go for the standard one. So the standard one, let's say Nicole here. Hi there, my name is Nicole. I will read any text you type here. Yeah, so it's that's the, the differences. Um, and yeah, and here is the S3 bucket where we store the empty files. So I'll show you how it looks in the front end. So basically you add a content um, and let's say I'll add the test content about Atlantic Ocean. Um, and let's just copy some text from here. And that's it. And we just, uh, yeah, just publish it. Um, one thing to note is um, in the current implementation, we are really not checking the publishing state. We can configure the module to save the file every time you save the node, but our assumption is, um, yeah, we want to leave it you know, up to the client and the editorial process to determine when to create the audio file. So here, as you can, uh, as you can see, we have this field, text to speech. So you can enable this field and this will make, will convert this text into the, uh, into audio file. So once I publish this now, you'll notice now we have listen to article button appearing above the content. Uh, we have to wait for a second, just for Amazon Poly to create the file and place it here. So if I check the, List now. So now this is scheduled, as you can see, it's in the, the queue and it should be completed shortly. Yeah, so it's, it's already completed. So it's really quick. Um, and once I play the file. Atlantic Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean occupies an elongated S-shaped basin extended. Yep, that's, that's how it works. So um, the settings, so you can set the text to speech feature settings in two places. The first place is in the content type itself, we added a third party configuration. Um, and this third party configuration allows you to um, either enable text to speech for all the content from this content type. Also, you can allow an override. So basically, if you enable this and you uncheck this box, that means content editors will not have the option to disable the text to speech. Um, uh, feature, or if you allow it this way, that means they will have the option that they can enable on certain content, uh, content items if they want to. And then this is what I was talking about, about the different processing modes. So you can have um, either to convert the content to audio, to audio immediately, or just uncheck this if you want the content to be queued um, and then processed in the background by Chrome. Um, another setting is just, um, like API settings, for example, the AWS user uh, credentials. So I won't be showing that now, but it's it's um, yeah it's a general settings here where you can specify the the AWS user and the credentials, um, as well as you can also choose. Uh, I think that's why I can just delete the user later on. So I'll just show you quickly. Um, so you can specify the access keys and stuff, um, and then the bucket S3 bucket, as well as which language and voice generation mode, whether it's standard or neutral. Um, and then you here you can also select the available um, voices. So uh, this way. Um, yeah, uh, I'll show you quickly the custom view modes we created for this 
content type. So if I go back here, um, just show you quickly, we have this view more text to speech, and that's where you basically specify which fields will be sent to the Amazon policy. So for example, if I want the published date to appear, I can do it. I can just drag drop here and save the view mode. Um, also, I can place it an, above the body. So this gives you the option if you want to not really follow the like you know, the actual layout in the front end, you can specify a different layout here when the text is narrated. Um, there is a custom widget we created for this. Um, the reason we created custom widget is we didn't want to have two different fields for the audio URL and also the option to enable the um, to enable the, the text to speech feature. So we created one field and that field actually use it, um, uses Drupal serialization API to save the three values, which is the enable checkbox, enable disable checkbox and the audio file URL. And oh, another thing we do check as well is we compare the content if let's say an audio file is generated, when we save the node again, we do a comparison to make sure we are not generating the, regenerating the file and necessary. We compare the content, see if there are any changes there. If there are no changes, we're not, we're not gonna be regenerating the file, but if there are changes, then we regenerate the file. So we do have, we do keep a hashed version of the content, and then we compare it when we save the node to make sure that we are unnecessarily not, you know, regenerating the MP3 file um and uh, yeah that's that's about it i'm just making sure that i haven't forgot anything else um yeah that's that's about it so it's it was really good experience um and uh, even though there are some commercial alternatives to amazon poly um that offers a lot of features but i think in terms of pricing in terms of customization it was really a good choice um and it it was really uh, good to see that we have now tools that allows you to you know basically provide more accessibility because when you have the main use of text to speech is mainly for accessibility also for you know it's more user friendly because if you have a long article you can just listen to it instead of um, reading the whole thing um, and a lot of people use it also for broadcasting mainly this, this is one of the use cases of Amazon Poly to support podcasting where you can you can create the article on your blog and then convert that to audio file where, and then you can um, stream that audio file as a podcast. So it's really powerful feature and uh, yeah, it was fun to work with. Um, so any questions? I did have a few questions as we went along. Um, I think you answered many of them, which is good. Uh, I was just going to ask about the use cases, but you mentioned the podcasts. And the other thing I was going to ask was about accessibility, right? So this was, what is the main intent for this for the for the client? Yeah, for the client it was mainly because um, there was mainly because actually some people their reading skill, especially non English speakers, native speakers, their reading skill might not be as good as their listening or right. their, in terms of comprehension. I mean, so they they understand better when they listen to things. So that's why we have this feature especially because it was apparent from the COVID um, crisis that, you know, publishing announcements, not everyone can understand what the announcement is about because maybe the reading skill is not up to, you know, the right. level. Of course, so yeah. yeah, the audio file makes it easy for them to listen to it and maybe that will help them understand the content better. Yep, that's cool. Um, and I was going to ask about slang and other kind of words, but I noticed that you had the lexicon there. So I suppose you could add you know, whatever um, uh, terms you wanted to so that it would be there, right? Or does it just read through? Yep, so you can add, um, you know, you can add different uh, lexicon. And as I mentioned, also for acronyms, for example, right. uh, you can do it here. Also, you can do it in Drupal, for example, um, where you can configure, like you allow, we didn't have that option here, but we can have an option where when you send the content, you can also send or use SSML to basically that, yeah. wrap yeah. Yeah, around acronyms and stuff like that. So it's, it's really a powerful tool. Yeah, that's cool. I had just one more question or just around again. Um, for accessibility, can this be used for, to create, oh, I suppose it would be, right, to generate audio transcripts 
effectively that's what it is right it is it is and yeah. it actually supports creating for video files so you can uh, support yeah it supports the uh creating transcript for video file so you can um yeah. and it's interestingly if they charge a bit differently for the video than the audio uh but still the pricing is really really good because they do offer up to i believe 16 million character within the free type uh so you have the free um free usage and on top after you finish the free usage, then they will start charging you so uh, i think the bill for this particular client maybe like per month will be less than 50 dollars if yeah for, for the amount of usage they use right now yeah. um uh, one thing we also provided is um, a way to bulk generate. Um, I believe that that module is not enabled here, but we did offer another thing, which is you can bulk generate the audio file for multiple content from here yeah. to for batch processing. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say the last thing I was going to say is just that I think it's interesting because um, one of the shortcomings that's very difficult to get triple A rating for uh for accessibility on sites is normally comes down to the cost of um getting audio transcripts for instance because someone's actually got to write it and someone's actually got to spend the time to talk it through especially when you have media releases which could be several pages or or a video right um this would be a very powerful and exposed cost effective way to, to increase and narrow that gap to get to AAA. I think it's cool exactly yeah it's, it's really cool and it's again the pricing the best thing about the pricing is per character and you can have pay as you go. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, really good. Like, as I mentioned, a three hours, 23 hours is video or like audio file, um, or sorry, like um, a million character, which equals 23 hours of audio is only $16. If you use the most advanced mode, which is the neural mode, but if you use the standard one, it's only $4 American dollars. So it's, it's really, it's really cost effective. Um, and, and the good thing about this one is you have fully customization. So you can you can determine what you want to send and how you can process it. And then you can also use other services in Amazon to complement the whole package. So you can do all the processing. Right now we're doing it in Drupal, but you can do the whole processing in Amazon and you just get the end file and, and just publish it in your site. Um, another thing is because S3 is a public place, you can actually use this file in, in other sites. You can use it in your own, let's say, other services, you know, because everyone can access the S3 file. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Um, uh, that's the last of my questions before. Is there anyone else that has any other questions? Yeah, obligatory question. Uh, since this is a Drupal module, is it available for anyone else to use or is it specific to this uh, client? Or... Yep. Um, our goal is definitely to contribute this, um, yeah, this module back to the community. So that's our goal. And and when we worked on it, we really focused on having it really um, self-contained. So everything, the audio player, everything is within the module. Um, so it will require some polishing, but I believe we can definitely contribute this one back. And 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 the client, um, yeah, and the client is a believer in open source as well. Nice, thanks. Yep. Anyone else? Silence. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Ahmed, for that. Um, nice. Yeah, that was excellent. That's actually quite interesting, and I can see so many uses for that. That's uh, pretty cool. I'll um, I'll uh, stop the recording here.